Hello, everyone, and welcome to another super cool radio interview. I'm your host, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. I got some great guests joining me at this time who I'm very excited to chat with. Please welcome from Iowa, Scarlet Rocks. What is up? How is it going? Let's do this. <laughs> very nice to uh, have you guys on the show. I know we got quite a bit to uh, discuss with everything going on with the band. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for having us. We're we're stoked to be doing this. It's always tons of fun just just talking, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. Before we dive into everything, uh, if everyone can introduce themselves and say what instrument they play. Yeah, uh, let's go from this side, and we'll go this way. Yeah. I'm a uh, Danny Slade. I play lead guitar. Uh, Lizzie Jacks, bass and vocals. Yeah. yeah. I am uh, Deuce Mac. I am rhythm guitar and vocals. I'm Ashley, and I play drums. Thank you guys so much. So I'm curious for you guys. So like, how did this uh, this lineup uh, and this band come together? Uh man. Uh, me and Jax, we we had known each other for a while. Um, our, our parents kind of uh, they they hung out within the 80s and 90s and went to concerts together. So it was kind of fate to be that their kids would wind up forming a band together um so me and jacks had kn known each other since birth basically um, we are we are the spawn of 80s rock parents yeah it, right that's like spot on um and then eventually um looking for a drummer and uh i was in some guitar store uh, about 20 minutes north of where i live and there's some kid in there who's he's just messing around and stuff and the guitar the shop owner was getting a little he's getting a little pissed off at him it's like, who the hell is that guy? And he's, oh, I don't know. A couple months later, um, me and Jax are we're trying out a drummer, and the same guy walks in, and it happened to be him. Uh, and so uh, we met him through just kind of a feeler on, on yep. social media. Social media can do good sometimes. Um, so, And then uh, months later, um, later down the road, we were out of a lead guitar player. Same same thing. Put out a feeler on social media, and some guy from Minnesota messages us, and uh, now he lives with me. So that's how the current lineup came to be. Oh, right on. So I'm curious, what were you doing the the guitar store that you're pissing off the owner? Oh, I kept shutting off the amp the wrong way because yeah. I refused yeah. to believe that it was tubes. Yeah, it was a it's a 20 watt tube amp, and. Uh, with two bands, you're, you're supposed to put it on standby first and then shut it off. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, this is not a tube. He's like, just, it's just this it. big. It's not, it, there's no way there's a tube in that. Yeah. And was it a tube amp or not? It was. It was. I actually bought the amp. I oh, actually, but yeah. I, I broke that. it in for you. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> But also, I did want to uh, discuss for you guys. So, uh, you guys uh, did a little bit of touring this year, from what I've seen. You guys went to Maryland from uh, from some of the tour, uh, the videos I've seen on YouTube channel. So, how was that experience? Uh, the most fun I've had in my entire life. Uh, me and Ashton, uh, we we like to go and party after shows. So, um, we we were just we were having a blast out there. I mean. Um, just going all the way to the East Coast, and even for a one-off show like that, um, it was it was so fun. And um, Dave Dillman, who organized the the event, um, we can't thank him enough for inviting us out there. Um, just just riding on the bus for kind of was it seventeen two, hours, two days straight, two yeah. days, yeah, yeah, <laughs> two days from Iowa to Maryland. Stopped in Indy, yep. you know. Had some friends there, yeah, uh, and then did the did the rest of the drive the next day. So yeah, driving through those mountains though, it's it's a little scary. I kind of slept through it, but I woke up. There's a moment where I woke up and 
it was just like it's just hills. It's it was like, just we were at the top of something, and there's fog everywhere. And I was like, "What the hell is going on?" And yeah. I look around, and we're just like on the top of a mountain. Um, uh, it's it's, it's kind of neat, but no, Maryland was actually like the most fun I've had in my entire life. Um, amazing crowd, amazing people out there. I was sick. <laughs> yeah, I got very sick at that show, and everybody yeah. else had tons of fun. So I'm happy for. You're happy for me. I'm happy for you, dude. Yeah. You're always sick. Quit having a pussy ass immune system. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> You're sick of all right. All right, So I'm curious. So how did how did that come out? Uh, come about to have uh, have you guys perform in Maryland? Um, kind of going back to a guy named Dave Dillman. He uh, every year he does an M3 pre party before the M3 festival, and he finds usually around four to five bands that are kind of their unsigned uh, unsigned rock and roll bands from the United States uh, who just who just are awesome, just kick-ass bands. And uh, he had messaged us actually the year year before, and we we were like, yeah, we'll, we, we'll be down to do it. Let's see. We're going to try to get on some tour support on the way out there just to kind of make it worth the trip. Uh, and, and plans fell through, and... Um, we had wound up waiting another year and Dave reached out to us again. Um, and it was, I guess he saw the videos on YouTube, Instagram or something. And he, he just, he really needed to see it himself. Um, and we went out there and we had a great show. It was awesome. It was a great lineup too. The us, Midnight Devils, who else? Ratchet Dolls. Ratchet, Ratchet Dolls. Dolls was there. Yeah. Really good yeah. lineup. Oh yeah, definitely. That's a, that's a very strong lineup. And, um, I've interviewed the Midnight Devils. Awesome band They're great. Uh, as well. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really good friends with Sam. Sam's Sam's an absolute. Yep. Sam's great. We love Sam. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, I'm glad. Well, most of you had a good time outside of you know one being sick, but yeah. I'm glad the majority of you guys had a good time. We had a good time until the moment he got off stage. Then yeah. uh, we have a designated puke bucket uh, in in the bus. It used to be on stage. <laughs> yeah, for him specifically, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had one on the bus for just in case someone drank a little too much or something. And um, he, he put it to use. Yeah. He put it to use. Yep. Now, did you have to use it while on stage performing? Okay, so that's a whole other story. Yeah, that's all. That's that's uh, in the past. Well, not about. in Maryland, no. Okay, not in Maryland. Okay. Yeah, but like back in like, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago? It was in the first year, yeah. I think. Um. So I don't know. I have this thing. I'm, I'm totally past it now. It's not an issue. But... There would be times where I would get way over, not overheated, but like overworked because I'm pushing, I'm you singing and I'm pushing your diaphragm yeah, too much. Exactly. It's kind of like when you, you know, you need to throw up, yeah. but your, your body's not there yet. And you kind of, you push your diaphragm out to try to get, get it out. But uh, I, it's the yeah. same kind of feeling when you're singing. You're just yeah. pushing your diaphragm way too hard, and it's triggering a gag reflex. And, and it just it sucks because I would be mid song singing, and I would just have to stop because I, if I didn't stop, there would be puke everywhere. Yeah. It, there would be times where um, so. we'll, we do a cover of "Talk Dirty to Me" by Poison, and there'd be times where um, we'll be in the chorus, and you know it's kind of like a gang vocal part, and um, our manager Jim, he'd be like, "Why is Deuce singing the chorus?" And he turn around and. Jack's Jax is in the keep it in the bucket. So yeah, but that issue has been solved. That's fine. It has been solved. That has not happened in years. Yeah, so long time. Sometimes, sometimes shows have their have their little quirks. You know, nuts and bolts you have to tweak and tighten up, and that that was something we uh, we figured out early on. I'm glad it's been resolved because uh, that's probably not not a good issue to face every show. No. Nope. Right, so now, um, I also did want to highlight uh, another show you guys recently performed at, which you guys opened for Bisto Blanco. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah. Last so, week. Uh, yeah, so uh, how was that? It was great. It was awesome. Um, it was uh, a club um, that I, I, I'd i always loved growing up as a kid. Um, throughout middle school and high school, I'd gone there a couple times to go see uh, a couple of bands, including Bisto Blanco, that I, I really loved, and some of the best shows I've ever seen were in that club. Um, and it was it was really well past due that would we, we would wind up playing there. Um, so it was uh, it was just a blast, and uh, getting to see Chuck and Calico again and getting to talk with them was amazing. 
Um, Calico is an absolute sweetheart, and, and Chuck's just the coolest guy ever. So yeah. it, was, uh, it was really cool to, to be able to have that opportunity and, and see all of them. Yeah, and me and Deuce, Deuce and I have been friends with a couple of the Alice Cooper guys for a while now. And Tommy Hendrickson, Ryan Roxy, um, I'm not super close with Chuck, but close enough to where, you know, we know each other. Um, so it was really cool to, you know, open for his band. They, they kicked ass. That is, sounds like a really awesome experience. Was that your first time playing at the venue, or have you played at that venue before? Yeah, first time. First time, okay. Yeah. Right on, right on. Well, I'm glad. Oh, I saw, some, I think there were some videos or photos floating around on Facebook. I saw, I, I've seen a little bit of it. it. looked like it was a great time. Yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah, big crowd. Crowd was good. Uh, hot and sweaty club show, so. <laughs> hey, those are the best. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, I'm... So kind of focusing on like the performance side since this is where I was I was leading. So like I'm curious for you guys, do you approach like uh performing live differently than recording music? Uh yeah, it's a it's a totally different experience. Um recording wise, it's 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 really kind of um pristine. It's it's just really stripped down and gutted and, and you take kind of take it one by one, um little baby steps when you're recording, because you know, one small mistake can make a recording go horribly wrong um but you know playing live is just so natural for us um you know we we spent so much time during during uh covid um we we had built a stage in this barn and we had spent so much time learning how to move around on a stage and um how to talk to an audience i i mean i practiced talking to an audience to right next to our stage we had built in that barn there was uh three horse stables and there was two horses and a donkey and then like, you know i'd be talking to these horses like it was madison square garden but and we, we we had so much time to prepare for that and and i think it would be ingenuine to go out and play shows and and not give it our all um so you know every time we have a show coming up it's it's just pure excitement we're so ready we we just want to fast forward to the next day we love being on stage it's our favorite thing ever yeah we're not one of those bands that goes up there and just stares at our feet like we yeah. we, move, we move around a lot. we move kind of kind of gives the sound guy a little yeah a little run for his money yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i believe that so like how long like take like practicing that it then like the stage presence became natural at that point it, it didn't take too long um, because I think I think all of us kind of grew up on um, those big theatrical bands like um, Kiss, Alice Cooper, Wasp, uh, Van Halen, stuff like that. Uh, you know, we all, I know like me and Jax from very young ages, like three or four, our parents were throwing us in front of TVs and throwing in DVDs of Motley Crue and, and Kiss concerts and stuff like that. So from a very young age, I kind of studied that stuff and... Um, even now before a show, just to kind of get me in the right mood before I go to bed, I'll, I'll throw on something, um, just throw something on the projector and just study. And, uh, so it didn't really take, it, it didn't take us that long. Um, we had a couple more than a few months, uh, during the pandemic to kind of figure it all out. And we'd record ourselves, um, as we were playing and, um, say, okay, you see what you did there. Don't do that. Or, you know, stuff like that. And, and it, by the time that first summer came around where venues started to open back up, um, we, we just, we just exploded. And, and by the time, um, the end of that summer came, um, we only had like two weekends off that entire summer. We were doing Saturday, Sunday, you know, in two different cities around Iowa. And we just went all around the state of Iowa that first summer, uh, back from COVID. Um, just kind of getting ourselves out there. And ever since, we've been just <coughs> skyrocketing. I mean, we've been doing bigger and bigger things. Oh, yeah, definitely, for sure. Like, uh, and it definitely comes through, like, from some of the, you know, videos and photos I've seen. Like, you guys definitely give it your all. And, like, that practice that you guys had that, you know, you took the time to build a good foundation to then, as we're seeing now, like, continue to build off that. I'm curious for all of you guys, um, do you each have a favorite song to perform live? Uh, we've been kind of, we've been kind of introducing, 
um some some new songs that are going to be on the second album just kind of testing them out live um as, specifically in longer sets where we need to fill up our set with some couple more songs um one of my favorites to play is one of those new songs is a song called touch me tease me um it's just a really sleazy song that's just it's one of the dirtiest songs i've ever written um and i remember the the night i wrote it i i was like holy shit like I was kind of in the middle of a writing block. I, I went like six to eight months where I just couldn't write a song to save my life. And uh, when that song came out, I was like, holy shit, this is good. Um, so that's one of my one of my favorites to play live right now. I don't, what, what about you? Attitude by the Misfits. Oh, I like yeah. playing that one. Yes. <laughs> that one's fun. That's a fun cover to play. Taste Your Tongue is a lot of fun. Taste Your Tongue? That's, that's a fast one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'd probably say Call Me Crazy. It's at the end of the show. It's like mm -hmm. really good... Uh, not an encore, but it's a good, uh, it's a good end to the night. Yeah. Yeah. Call me crazy is, uh, that was end to the album end to the night. Yeah. Know? We shot a video for it at the Rust Belt, which we're playing in October with Jackal. So that's a good venue. We love a lot. Um, so yeah, mine would be call me crazy. Very nice. I all very good song originals and covers. So I'm curious for you guys, obviously I know it depends on like the time length for your set, but like, how do you guys put together a set uh, for a show? We just do the best songs, uh, really. We we take the best songs off our debut album, um, and and we throw in, um, you know, one or two covers that are the best covers we do. Um, you know, for example, Talk Dirty to Me, um, Rock and Roll All Night by Kiss. Um, we'll we'll do the best songs and just and do the best possible show we can. Um, we we don't want to compromise, you know, for the sake of playing another song off our album versus a cover when it's not the best song for example so recently we added a cover like ashton was saying the misfits cover the attitude that one has gone so well we love we love doing that one yeah we don't love doing covers but we'll throw it in you know to keep the crowd engaged so yeah all right and like what's kind of the the ratio for like you know cover songs versus original songs in a set it really, uh, it really depends. Like, if we're playing like a forty-minute set, we'll do it's two, like two covers. It's like nine to one. Yeah, you yeah. know, we'll do nine originals or like eight originals, two covers. That's 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 a good rate. It's like eighty percent to twenty. Yeah. So, and that's just right. that's really when it comes down to it. It's really just because we only have one album out. Right. You know, we don't have enough material to cover. You know, more than forty minutes, really. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, that does actually kind of lead me to one of my final questions I have for this interview. So, and you guys have already kind of been mentioning it. So, like, obviously, you have the debut album, Scarlet's Web, which is out. But, like, yeah. w like when's kind of the timeline for some uh, n more new music from you guys? Yeah, um, we we have about um, – we're, we're really in the songwriting phase right now. We probably have about 10 or 11 songs written right now. Um, whether or not they're album-worthy or not is is up for interpretation yet. Um, but I think, you know, you write a bunch of, bunch of songs and then you pick from the pool really. Um, so we, we just, we just want to write a few more songs. Um, and, and then we'll, we'll kind of go through, um, pick and choose, pick and choose what the best ones are. Um, right now, um, I've just, I've been listening to the demos nonstop, just trying to get a feel for the album. Um, and it's, it's really story wise um because scarlet scarlet's web is kind of secretly it secretly tells a story uh you know by no means is it a concept album but it's it's secretly it kind of has this vibe to it and uh the the next album is it's it's gonna be you know there's a couple songs that we have um in the bank right now that are just they're heavy it's heavier it's louder it's um, filthy. we've we've learned so much more since the since the last last record to where we're we're more um i don't know we're more in in tune with our instruments we know how to play more intricate stuff now um so it, it's it's just gonna it's gonna be really exciting if i had to judge when um I, i'm not supposed to make any promises but 2025 is going to be a very interesting year right well i'm I've been digging the debut album, but I'm definitely looking forward to uh, hearing some more new music. As we're closing this interview out, so you already kind of talked about like what's kind of 
the rest of 2025, you know, at least the early 2025 looking like for you guys? We got, I think, a week or two off, and then we go to yeah. uh, East Moline. We're playing a show with Jackal, and that's like October 11th, I think. Um, and then after that, we just uh, we're taking a few months off to finish up the writing process and, and recording demos and um, we're supposed to work with a very special person um, on the next album. Um, so, you know, just giving ourselves time to prepare for uh, kind of phase two. So. Right on. Uh, as I said, very excited for you guys. Look forward to seeing what you guys come up with for, uh, you know, end of 2024, beginning of 2025. But now uh, for everyone watching and listening, like where are the best places to find uh, Scarlet Rocks online yeah um you can find us uh our handle is just scarlet rocks um on instagram uh facebook and in youtube are our kind of main three things um and then uh www.scarletrocks.com you can find um t-shirts hoodies um our album on cd and vinyl um and if you want to if you want to you know, stream it, do it the easy way. Um, you know, we're on Spotify, Apple Music. Um, we got you know, some cool merch too. I already talked about that. Sorry, um, <laughs> but we got a we got a, all of our all of our music's on on pretty much every streaming platform you can think of. Um, so, you know, you can find us pretty much anywhere at just at Scarlet Rocks. I'll leave some links for Scarlet Rocks in the description of this podcast. Please check out and support them, guys. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, thanks having, for having us. It was so much fun doing this. Of course, of course. For all of Scarlet Rocks, I'm your host always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. This is Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty. Yeah, Maddie T.